Hey everybody, Morgan here. So we are starting into the last phase uh, of the chemical reactions lecture and this deals with oxidation and reduction reactions. And we did these last spring, but we did the entire chapter at a distance. So I have some concerns about how well you absorbed it. So we, we really need to have you working your, your darndest on these, okay? So what are oxidation and reduction reactions? They are a transfer of electrons, a transfer of electrons. Acid and base reactions were a transfer of protons. Redox reactions are a transfer of electrons. So a redox reaction is a reaction here, a reaction where one species is oxidized and one is reduced. You can't have an oxidation without a reduction. They go hand in hand. So specific that specific let's try that for a third time. Specifically, oxidation is a loss of electrons. Now, we started talking about oxidation before we actually knew what electrons were, based on like the rusting of metal, okay? And we kind of realized that it was the adding of oxygen to metals, and hence we called it oxidation for adding of oxygen. But that's not the only type of oxidation. It's just the first one that we were aware of. Okay, So that's kind of the uh, origin of the name for it. Now for reduction, it's a gain of electrons. And again, we started to talk about these before we knew what electrons were and what we were actually reducing was the number of oxygen atoms in a species. And this was based a lot on Fe2O3, rust, whether we were adding oxygen or removing it, etc, etc. Okay? So, when we talk about just an oxidation or just a reduction on its own, we're referring to that as a half reaction. So like copper turning into copper 2 plus, plus 2 electrons, or copper 2 plus, plus 2 electrons turning into copper. Those are both half reactions. This is the oxidation version. And this is the reduction version of it. Okay? Now, the uh, term oxidizing agent, it's not exactly a term that you would be tested on, but I think it's important for you to understand. An oxidation, oxidizing agent is something that is reduced. Now, what does that mean? If something is reduced, that means it's gaining electrons. How is it gaining electrons? They must be coming from another species. And by coming from another species, you are forcing that other species to lose them. So if that other species is losing them, you are forcing that other species to be oxidized and the species that's being reduced is the oxidizing agent. So what's a reducing agent? Something that is oxidized. We can apply the same argument. If a species loses electrons, it is forcing another species to gain those electrons. 
So if we were in the classroom and I took a $20 bill out of my wallet and I put it down on the demo table, somebody in the front row would pick it up. Now the question is, did I give them the $20 or did they take the $20 from me? And both answers are correct, okay? It's just that I was the species that lost it and they are the species that gained the $20. I forced them to gain, they forced me to lose, okay? So, typically how do we keep track of which species is oxidized and which is reduced? Well, we have something called the oxidation number. It's a definition. Don't try to memorize it, okay? I don't even have it memorized, okay? It is a very complicated, weird definition, okay? It is the imaginary charge And right away, I don't like this definition because it starts off with imaginary. The imaginary charge an atom would have if the shared, sorry, shared electrons were divided equally between identical atoms bonded to each other. Okay, so what we have there is kind of a weird definition that uh, you're never going to be asked that definition on a test, trust me, okay? So what is oxidation number? Don't tell anybody I said this, but just think of it as charge. <laughs> now, one of the problems with thinking of it as charge is that we're going to be using it with covalent compounds, which aren't charged, okay? Important point, really important point. Oxidation numbers are assigned to atoms, individual atoms. They are not assigned to overall compounds. So it's each atom in the compound has its own oxidation number. Okay, so next step. We have some rules for assigning oxidation numbers. They're not terribly complicated. I'm hoping you remember a bit of this from the spring. First off, for an atom, in its natural state, sorry, I don't think I need the print, print the uh, apostrophe there, for an atom in its natural state, The oxidation number is zero. Now, that does kind of make sense because if you have something in its natural state like a piece of iron and you're holding the iron, you're not getting an electric shock, okay? Just that piece of iron, there it is, okay? If it were charged, you'd be getting an electric shock. That means it's neutral. So elements in their natural state have no charge. Therefore, the oxidation number on those elements would have to be zero. Okay, two. For a monoatomic ion, the charge is the oxidation number. So if you have something like chloride, Cl minus, the oxidation number is negative one. If you have sodium ion, Na plus, the oxidation number is plus one. Pretty straightforward. Third rule, oxygen is always 
negative 2. Now, anytime you see something like that, you know there's going to be some exceptions coming your way. Oxygen always negative 2, comma, except. See rule 1. And in peroxides, it is negative 1. Now, we don't talk that much about the peroxide ion, and maybe I should add it to your stack of flashcards. I'm just trying to keep that stack from being too big. The peroxide ion is O2 with a 2 minus charge. Okay? So, each oxygen in there has a minus 1 charge. Okay, rule four, hydrogen is always positive one, except, see rule one, and in metallic, hydrides. is negative 1. So the hydride ion, which is in your stack of polyatomic ions, H minus, okay, recognize those because it'll always be attached to a metal like sodium. And for polyatomic ions, you have to do the algebra. Their charge equals the sum of all the oxidation numbers. So let me give you a few examples, then send you out to try to do a few on your own. So we're gonna do we're gonna focus on chlorine. Cl2 is its natural state must be zero. HCl, well that is an H plus and a Cl minus, so that's a negative one. HOCl, well we know hydrogens are plus one and chlorines are minus, well sorry, hydrogens are plus one, oxygens are minus two. So those rules, that means that chlorine must be a positive one for the whole thing to add up, think about the polyatomic, OCl minus, negative two on the oxygen. So yeah, it would have to be a plus one, add those together, that equals a minus one. Okay, HClO2, well let's see, I got a plus one and then I got negative two, negative two, because I got two oxygens. That means that chlorine's the plus three. As I'm adding these oxygens, that's a plus five and a plus seven to go through there. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, go finish the rest of these off, come back, let me know how you did. Okay, welcome back. I'm hoping you found a negative three there because the lithiums are plus one a zero, a plus one, okay? So the oxygen is a minus two and you got two nitrogens. Here we have a plus five because you got a negative two, negative two, negative two for the three oxygens, okay? And there's a minus one that's left over. So it's almost like saying X plus negative six equals negative one. Here we got a plus four we got a plus two, a plus five, a minus three, plus three. Don't know what happened to that formatting there. Hope that's not showing on your outlines. And a negative two. Okay. Now, I've got a couple weird ones here. Fe3O4. That's a formula of a mineral. And if you play with that, you just you get fractions. It's a stupid way of writing the name of the formula but it's the way we tend to do it in America. 
Fe2O3.FeO. I believe the mineral is called magnetite. Maybe it's hematite. Okay. <clears throat> it turns out you've got irons that have different oxidation states in here. These are plus threes, and that one's a plus two, and the oxygens are negative twos. This one's hydrogen peroxide. Plus one for the hydrogens, minus one for the oxygens. These are both metallic hydrides. Plus one for the sodium, minus one for the hydrogen. You can always spot a hydride because the metal's first. Beryllium hydride. Beryllium's plus two, so those hydrogens are like, you know, minus one and minus one. Okay. I know it's review, but I was a little concerned that it's something you might not be all that fresh at, so that's why we're putting in some serious time to review it because it's a really important concept. Okay, thanks for tuning in. That's Morgan. We'll catch you in the next one.